Welcome back to another Record by Data IQ video. A question that often get asked is how much math and statistics we need to know to learn data science and machine learning and how best to learn those topics. So in today's video, we'll be talking about the math we need to know to learn data science together with some useful books and resources to help you with the learning process. Mathematics is very broad, but the good news is there is only a few areas of mathematics that we most often use as a data scientist or data analyst. They are linear algebra, calculus, statistics, and probability. Statistics is probably more under science and math because it relies on real world data, but let's include it here for completeness. Once I made a quick poll on my own channel to see which area my viewers find most challenging to learn. Interestingly, one out of three of them say that calculus is the hardest, probably because it's a bit more abstract than the other areas. Before we go into the detail, I want to make a small note here. It's important to know that the level of math knowledge you need to know very much depends on your goal. It is like a continuum and the one hand of the spectrum is if you want to do a PhD in data science or go into machine learning research where you study and come up with the most cutting edge algorithms, then it is necessary to go in depth and study math very well and maybe you should grab the biggest math books you can find on calculus and linear algebra and start grinding. However, I think many of us, myself included, are doing applied data science instead of doing research, meaning we want to solve business problems through data science, but we are not necessarily the people who study and come up with new machine learning algorithms, so we might not need to know every little details or understand the most advanced math concepts. It's okay to have some solid high-level basic understanding and that's probably enough. Alright, so the first important kind of math used in data science is linear algebra. It is a branch of mathematics that has everything to do with vectors and matrices and operations on them. Some main concepts to know in this area is, for example, dot product, matrix multiplication, matrix factorization, eigenvalues and eigenvectors, singular value decomposition, and so on. You might encounter a linear algebra in several machine learning algorithms. For example, principal component analysis uses singular value decomposition to present your data in few dimensions. Linear algebra is also the backbone of the calculations behind all neural network algorithms, so it is a very useful area of knowledge to have a solid understanding about. For learning or revising linear algebra concepts, I love watching videos on 3Blue1Brown channel. It is a channel that focuses on explaining things with animations and visualization. This channel has a whole playlist on linear algebra, which is very, very useful. The second branch of mathematics that's extremely useful for data science is calculus. It is a study of continuous change. Whether you loved or hated it in college, calculus pops up in several places in data science and machine learning. If you've ever learned about ordinary list squares problem in linear regression or learned about the backpropagation algorithm in neural networks, you might have encountered a lot of calculus. Important topics in calculus are limits, derivatives of a function, integrals, partial derivatives, and the chain rule, and some other additional concepts around those topics. I used to like calculus a lot back in high school and I actually found it quite intuitive, but the more more you dig into it, the more complex it can be, so I kind of stopped digging at some point. I also realized that calculus necessary for data science is actually usually not super advanced and often only limited to the concepts we just mentioned, and that's good news for many of us who find calculus difficult. Statistics and probability is the third important pillar in data science. In fact, many experts in the field consider classical machine learning nothing but statistical learning. Many of us are probably already familiar with some basic statistics like data summaries and descriptive statistics. For example, the mean, the mode, quantile, standard deviation, variance, covariance, and correlation. Besides that, we might also encounter conditional probability. For example, when you learn about Bayes' theorem, we also need to know about other common topics such as probability distributions, sampling, and hypothesis testing. Again, what you need to know really depends on what you want to do. Honestly, I can't remember the last time I used t-test or worked with t-distribution anymore. These topics are quite essential when you're building or validating a statistical model. One of my most favorite statistics books for data science is 
practical statistics for data scientists. It's very beginner friendly and covers all of the core concepts that you need to know, including descriptive statistics, sampling distribution, hypothesis testing and A-B testing, and also prediction and unsupervised learning. Apart from linear algebra, calculus and statistics, for some of us who might be curious about computational systems, data structures and algorithms, you might also want to learn a little bit discrete math. But it's not strictly necessary in my opinion. I only learned discrete math in my computer science degree and it's quite interesting to learn about sets, counting functions, basic data structures like stacks, queues, graphs, hash tables, and their applications in different programming languages. This knowledge might be quite useful in several occasions. So for example, if you work with social network analysis, you might find it useful to know about graph data structure and the algorithms that you can perform on graphs. Another example might be when you need to choose a specific data structure to be able to store your data most efficiently. Another very useful concept you learn in discrete math is the growth of functions and the big O notation. When you have to make a choice of algorithms to use for your project, it's really useful to understand the time complexity and the space requirements of an algorithm using the big O notation. But I think generally those concepts are probably more useful further down the road for those of us who want to level up in our data science careers than for those of us who are just starting out. For most of us, learning math is a long learning process that requires patience and it is completely okay to feel imposter at some point. We all come from different backgrounds, so it's completely normal that you might find a particular area of math more challenging than others. To learn math more effectively, I usually look for a variety of resources to help myself learn. A lot of math books out there are pretty hard to read for beginners, so I'd actually go out on the internet and find more beginner-friendly resources and explanation that can be a bit more intuitive. One of the useful resources is the Data IQ Knowledge Base page. You can find here the explanation and hands-on tutorials on many useful topics and how you can apply them on the Data IQ platform. The topics range from data exploration, data sampling to machine learning, time series, NLP, image processing, active learning, and reinforcement learning. So if you're curious to learn more about how these concepts are actually applied and executed on an end-to-end -end platform like Data IQ, definitely check this out. Another great place for finding explainer content and tutorials is YouTube videos. Three Blue One Brown channel, as we mentioned earlier, All Start Quest channels are among the best YouTube channels for learning all things math and stats related. I'd also look for interesting articles on Medium if you prefer to read. Besides that, some interactive books like Immersive Math and Seeing Theory are my most favorite places for learning introductory linear algebra, probability, and statistics. Another tip I often find extremely useful for learning math for data science is to actually code the math formulas in R or Python. In the deep learning specialization on Coursera I took a while ago, I found it such a great course because you get to code the neural network algorithm from scratch using NumPy and you get to implement the backprop algorithm yourself, which is probably the hardest part to understand in neural network. And by doing so, you really step by step understanding how those matrix multiplications and partial derivatives, how they work, and it makes the whole complicated algorithm much more transparent and intuitive because you can code it yourself. I felt so much more confident with my understanding of neural networks through this process. And I guess this method can be applied to many other machine learning algorithms. For example, you can try for once coding an algorithm by hand like K means instead of using the out of the box function in the scikit-learn library. I believe you get to understand it so much better. So I hope you found the information and the tips in this video helpful. And if you want to learn more about data science and machine learning, feel free to check out other videos on Data IQ channel. And thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.